Before deeming Astroworld an instant classic, please keep in mind that seven of its songs claim that it's lit. Now based on this fad and the countless number of other artists doing the exact same thing, don't waste your time telling me that Travis Scott is reinventing the wheel or is taking the rap genre of music to a new level. There's your trigger warning if you don't like it, so be it. This is just all my opinion. Hey there, welcome back to True North Reviews. My name is Ryan, and today we'll be scrutinizing the third studio album from the Houston, Texas rapper Travis Scott. This project is called Astro World. Also a producer, singer, and songwriter, this trap artist has signed many record label deals over the years, dating back to 2012, as he worked with the likes of Kanye West on the compilation album Cruel Summer. Putting out a couple mixtapes before his first commercial full-length LP, Scott has since blown up with the single Antidote on his critically well-received album Rodeo, something that even I have come back to the odd time since its release in 2015. To his two most recent projects, one being called Birds in the Trap Sing McKnight, which came out in 2016, and the other being a collaborative record with Quavo from Migos released last year. Travis Scott has been on the rise with fame for a multitude of reasons, his record labels, his collaborations with stars like Drake, and even his partner Kylie Jenner have sparked people's interest heading into his newest release. And with this newest record, we have an interesting concept to go along with it. Being from Houston, one of Travis Scott's favorite places to go as a child was Six Flags Astro World, an amusement park that opened in the late 1960s before closing down in 2005 in order to start a development project for apartment buildings, which had numerous delays. Being frustrated with this, Scott understandably wanted to make an album that would be a follow-up to his debut Rodeo, something that would be a response to Astro World being shut down, and with this I had expectations for a project that would live up to Scott's word. Sonically remaining trap with a bit more of a spacey vibe to it, Astro World opens up with the track Stargazing. Being thrown into a drug-induced trance, Travis kicks off the album with an introspective, hard-hitting beat before switching it up with an even harder flow with the double entendres of the gold from the Los Angeles Lakers Kobe Bryant and jumping up like Moby Dick, you know, like the novel by Herman Melville, but also the electronic artist Moby. It's quite clever. Definitely one of the stronger tracks on the album, Stargazing, along with the transition in the middle of the song, may catch you off guard at some points through the first couple listens, but its unpredictability plays into the theme and concept of the album since the kids had their amusement park unwillingly torn away from them. The second song delves into the long list of star-studded features on the album, and first up is Frank Ocean. And on the song Carousel, Ocean's smooth and angelic-like voice is the mainstay for this song, but outside this, it's over before you can really get into the beat and the composition. But hey, I saw that the next track was a bit longer when listening to the album, clocking in over just five minutes, so I definitely thought that this one would be flushed out out for a more consistent instrumental and flow, but it's actually broken into three parts and a multitude of interludes that make the song feel like it's biting off more than it could chew. And the song that I'm referring to here is called Sicko Mode. It features Drake and Sway Lee, and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of hype and high energy trap percussion and bass on this track, but once I get into a certain section of the song, the composition is changed yet again from Drake's purposely cut off verse to Travis's boastful attitude towards life. Never really settling on a main topic other than luxury and fame, I just feel like this one could have been split into a few different songs since there were a lot of great ideas and a lot of decent starting points to be expanded upon. And from this, I have a question about the lyrical content. Do any of the first three songs on this project add to the Astro World storyline? Especially when this album was meant to be a response to the shutting down of the amusement park for kids? It just seems like there could have been so many great concepts tackled in the writing, from kids being rebellious after having something taken away from them, being juxtaposed to adults having something taken away from them too, uh, or even the consequences of growing old and having to deal with a loss. Essentially just a cross-sectional or longitudinal study if we want to get really psychological about it. But ultimately something that's just more personal and compelling than rappers just bragging about their wealth. It's not relatable to the majority of the casual listeners out there, and it's not like Scott hasn't covered these topics in his older material either. Putting those criticisms aside, I do admire the transitions between tracks on this album regardless of how boring the vocal performances may be. This is notable between the tracks Sicko Mode and Rest in Peace Screw, and then Rest in Peace Screw to the next track Stop Trying to Be God. Like seriously, these transitions are some of the best I've heard this year, offering 
and gradual energy changes, making the album very dynamic. And it's on that latter track that I mentioned there, Stop Trying to Be God, that Kid Cudi pitches in with his usual layered hums. But instead of the high quality humming that we get from Kid Cudi on Kids See Ghost from earlier this year, um, Cudi kind of just unfortunately goes back and resorts to his terrible quality on Birds in the Trap, almost sounding like his humming at this point could be just a novelty on this track. Outside of this, we get James Blake delivering a soulful bridge over top of a sulky organ chord progression being the highlight for this song. Overall, Stop Trying to Be God is a great track for its instrumentals and lyrical content, tackling the God complex and narcissism, but it's the vocal melodies and performances that really lack the conviction behind this track. The next two cuts are probably the most uneventful ones on this entire project, never really capitalizing on the feature's talent. Really, how can you have Pharrell Williams, The Weeknd, and Kevin Parker from Tame Impala be just as lackluster as the up-and-coming SoundCloud artists of Juice World and Sheck Wes, who, by the way, just signed to Travis Scott's record label? Don't answer that, it's rhetorical. Okay, so on to the next track, which is called Wake Up. The Weeknd gets a chance to shine as the lone feature on this one, but he still does his usual alcohol, sex, and car references that are just painful to listen to no matter how great of a vocalist he is. I just feel like he's done this way too many times before on his own solo material that I'm sick of it by now. And yeah, Travis Scott and Abel Tesfaye might be on the same page lyrically, but this is just generic and uninteresting. It's a slight improvement over their last collaboration on Birds in the Trap, fortunately, but nothing worth your time or anything special. The next song, 5% Tint, has ominous keyboard riffs stealing the show, as well as the feeling of being shot out into space at the end of the track, which is a very chilling atmosphere being created here, one of the better tracks on this album that conceptually connects to the record's name. Instrumentally, this aura deepens with the interlude kind of track Astro Thunder, as well as the guitars in the intro of Yosemite, the former being produced with the help of John Mayer of all people. Actually, a big surprise and accomplishment. Moreover, yes, instrumentally, this album is on the nose with its spacey and dreamlike vibes, but it's unfortunately the underwhelming vocal performances and repetitive references to the drugs that fail to push the envelope to a point where the remaining features on this project seemingly battle each other out for the most melodically flat and lifeless presentation. It honestly feels like Travis Scott told the other artists to stagnate and remain boring so he could barely outdo them in his own tedious contributions to the album. And one of those artists that chip in with a boring verse here at the end of the project is 21 Savage on a track called NC17. And this one here is as almost bland and boring and drab as 21's last feature on Birds in the Trap. At least the production is a little bit better for his voice, but the minimalist dark instrumental doesn't really suit him well for this track. It's going to be hard for him to really match his best feature on Post Malone's song, Rockstar, I feel, at least in my opinion. Next up, we get the platinum single, Butterfly Effect. Is it really worth the praise? Lyrically interesting, yeah, with the reference to the doors of Travis's Lambo and all the small things that kind of snowball into bigger consequences, as well as the M&M candies throw in. Uh, it's decent, but nothing I can really brag about. But skipping ahead to the closer on this album, Coffee Bean, it's something that I can easily get on board with because it's like a J. Cole meet my beautiful dark twisted fantasy era Kanye, with the auto-tune and personality of Travis Scott being put together in one song. And another great element to this track is how personal it gets. It's basically talking about all of Travis's fears with being Kylie's boyfriend and father to their child Stormy. Adding to that, the controversy of being the lover dealing with the reality of being black and its effect in Scott's relationship, kind of like the plot explored with the brilliant Jordan Peele film Get Out. Sonically on this cut, I love how the strings melt into menacing hums by the record's closing moments. And overall, one of the tightest and cleanest beats on this album, a highlight for sure, and something that finally mixes up the braggadocious trap sound on an album that's been pandering almost its entire runtime. But you know, after going through this entire review, I've learned something today. Trap music might not be my cup of tea, but that doesn't give me the right to hate on anyone else for their music tastes. And I sure don't want to be called an elitist based on the comment section. But tangent aside, Travis Scott is being put up on a pedestal, being called a goat as so many other rappers are being called today. But only time will tell if Astroworld is truly deserving of its instant classic sentiments by stands. Like, please, just wait a few months before you judge him as that. We could have a rapper come out tomorrow with his or her classic, and then you could tell me where Astroworld falls in 2018 or the decade as a whole. Anyways, what I'm trying to say about Astroworld altogether is that it has great potential to be a well-groomed and well-crafted album, from the production value to the instrumentals to the lyrics, the features, 
pretty much everything, but when one of these elements decides to play it safe, the ambition of this project falls apart like the Toronto Raptors when they play LeBron James in the playoffs. I truly want to root for Travis Scott, I really do. I think he can be more insightful than what his trap tendencies show, but for now I can only rate his newest record 6 out of 10. It's an improvement over Birds in the Trap, but not really close to the quality of his debut record, Rodeo. Sure, there are highlights on Astroworld, but it's with a scalpel that we need to surgically tear back and find these creative moments, or you know, just listen to it passively and you should be fine. Just don't listen to the lyrics too hard, because after all, it is trap music. So those are my thoughts on Astro World. Now I want to hear from you. Sound off down below in the comments. Let me know what you're thinking. Agree or disagree, I'm here to engage with you guys. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. My name is Ryan from True North Reviews. And as always, have a rockin' day. Thanks for watching.